There's a new HBO Max documentary that happens to feature a little bit of yours truly, but that's not the reason to talk about it. It's called huh. Gaming Wall Street, and it tracks the entire um, GameStop situation and attempt to sort of push back on Wall Street hedge funds and yes. the titans who normally run everything, both uh, on Wall Street and, frankly, in the country at large. And we're happy to be joined now by the producer of that documentary, Tobias Demmel, uh, joins us now. Great to see you, Tobias. Good to see you, man. Hey. Great to be here. Mm -hmm. So we've got a little bit of um, the trailer from Gaming Wall Street. Let's take a look at that. I've never seen a, here a group of stocks that you can no longer add to. There is a lot of emotion here. All of this rage. Definitely the worst point in my life. What can we do to give a voice to it? The GameStop frenzy ripped the curtain of how rigged our markets really are. They forced the broader public to start asking questions that they've never really asked before. And it's not just one firm, two firms, three firms, it's all the firms that commit capital. And that cracked open a whole investigation. Wall Street has been making money out of thin air. So that's basically stealing, right? The level of illegal activity is just astonishing. The market does get manipulated in a lot of ways that we don't see. But how do you play a game when someone else makes the rules? Someone can cheat and you'll never know. It's intentionally hidden from you that you can't see where the problems really lie. This is our one chance to blow up the Death Star. I don't even care who the whistleblower is. That's why it's important that people come forward. This is just the beginning. So Tobias, as a filmmaker, what was it about this story and what happened with um, GameStop that you thought would be compelling for an audience? That's a great question. So I started this actually as a niche documentary about uh, Wall Street bets and this crazy little world online where all these people were having their own investing journey and just simplifying very, very complicated finance topics. Uh, and it was one of my entry points to learning about investing. My dad has a long activism investor, ESG kind of background, um, and I always kind of felt stupid. And so finally during the pandemic, I had time like millions of others who just got interested <laughs> in investing. And then, you know, I was like, oh, this is this great online community. And suddenly GameStop is one of the crazy things on Wall Street bets that just blows up and becomes the number one headline. And so yeah. we knew that we had to do the doc right then. But as we kept going, we just kept going deeper and deeper into this wild world of Wall Street. And um, yeah, so that was much more compelling stuff once we started actually working on it. Yeah, I think the most important part about your film is when you actually interview a lot of the people on Wall Street and how they saw it as a commentary itself. Can you describe that for the audience and just like what exactly you found at the bottom of that? Yeah, so... The deeper we went, the more we started kind of asking these really important questions. So we uh, partnered up with Biltmore Films. You know, and I, as a director, I needed to get real experts on the producing team. Right. So my producer Tessa, who's been there from day zero, she's a great storyteller and knows a lot about the human stories and the sort of big picture components. But we wanted to really make sure that we would tell this super accurate and deeply researched story. So we teamed up with Biltmore Films, who was run by a hedge fund manager, John Fichthorn, and a securities analyst, Burke Kuntz. So John and Burke, they really know what's up on Wall Street and have all these insider connections. And so I said, look, there's all these conspiracy theories on Reddit, like this crazy, like, naked chart selling. It's definitely like bullshit, right? And they're like, no, mm -hmm. it's actually totally real. <laughs> and the more that we started really digging into it, the more I started realizing how fragile the system is and how easy it is for certain players, like you said, the titans that usually run the show, how easy it is for them to actually abuse the rules and the system that they've sort of helped construct. Um, and so that was one of the biggest takeaways is that some of these things are so far beyond the surface that you really have to go dig, you have to expose it, and then you have to kind of, um, you know, uh, put the responsibility on the regulators and the larger forces to be to actually correct this. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's what was so compelling, both at the time watching this all unfold and also watching your documentary, is you had this moment where it seemed like it was actually working. Like you had this sort of like mass distributed movement of people who were like, screw you, you all rig the system all the time. We're going to make this play. We're in it. We're doing it. It's happening. The price of GameStop, which is like, you know, not really poised for great success in the future probably, <laughs> continues to go up and up and up. That's probably going to be controversial yes, for me to say. Yes, people are going to get mad. <laughs> up and up and up, right? Not exactly what you would think as like the stock of the future. Uh, let's just put it that way. 
And then what happens? Robinhood app, which is what has enabled all these retail investors to be able to sort of get in the game and make these trades, they've got relationships with these hedge funds, and they decide that they're going to stop allowing people to buy just this handful of sort of meme stocks, right? You're still allowed to sell them, so you're allowed to put downward pressure on the price, but you're not allowed to buy them anymore. And frankly, it worked. Part of what's heartbreaking about um, the film is that you interview some of the people who really, you know, they lost money that was significant to them. And these were oftentimes people who'd already been fucked over by our financial system during the housing crisis, who had lost homes or lived through their parents losing their homes and being foreclosed on. And here they thought this is one little way to, you know, push back on this rigged system and say, screw you to Wall Street. And in the end, the big guy still won. Yeah, this was the, one of the interesting takeaways, right? That as we go deeper into the story, you have the brokers like Robinhood that shut down, right? And as we peel back the layers, like, why did they shut down, right? There's a bunch of different possibilities what might have also happened, right? These additional interests. But the primary ring thing was really the DTCC, the sort of central plumbing system saying, look, you got to pay $3 billion. But they knew ahead of time that Robinhood would not have that money. They could totally predict what the situation was going to be. And there's a responsible way to say, hey, we have a real big problem in the market. Let's talk with the SEC. Let's talk with the markets and figure out what's going on. But instead, the DTCC sort of said, you're on your own. Let's just see what happens. And I think that's one of these things in, in the system, right? Who are these different players? The DTCC is a privately owned corporation. It runs the entire system. There's very little accounting and transparency there uh, to the outside world. And we talked to Harvey Pitt, former chairman of the SEC, and one of his sort of striking quotes is, you know, that the, the DTCC is so powerful and so centralized, and there's so little insight. And he used to run the the SEC, the regulator himself, uh -huh. right? And so there's there's a lot of pieces to the system that need reform. That's one of the sort of biggest uh, the biggest takeaways. And then the individual people who got screwed really by the buy button being shut off, it helped certain players that this buy button was off, right? There were certain players like Citadel that were very likely exposed very strongly to the short side and possibly survived only because of this shutdown. And that part of the story has never been told, has never been properly investigated, right? The SEC report did never go into that. And so uh, with the documentary, we went into all of these questions. We said, what happened to Melvin Capital's position, right? They got out of the stock, but what does this really mean? And so there's all these fascinating stories of what, what Melvin did with their with their position, what happened at Citadel. And so, yeah, we tried to shine a light on all of that. Yeah, and I think that's what is the most important thing, I, at least I learned. I think it was an, that opening for a lot of people, which I always tried to emphasize, is I was like, look, it's free to trade, but that just means that you're not the customer, you are the product. People are upselling and front-running your trades who are big guys and they're making a whole lot more money than you actually are. So what do you think the takeaway was for the average Redditor, Wall Street, you know, kind of Wall Street bets person? I've been a Redditor for like, you know, 12 years mm -hmm. or something like that. It was kind of natural for me to, to kind of, that's why I saw this bubbling up early, I think. But I'm curious what the feeling and the takeaway was for a lot of those people who you talk to as well. Uh, for many of them, it was, I think, their first real experience at seeing market structure in play. Mm. And I think for many people on Wall Street, it was that experience as well, right? You can work on Wall Street for 20 years. Nobody's ever seen that, right? Uh, right. Like John says in the documentary, you know, he's never seen a basket of stocks just being taken away on the, you can no longer add to that position. And I think for many people, you started seeing, and I think Dennis Keller puts this great, right? It like rips the curtain off the system and it shows you all the dirty gears and wheels in the back and who is making decisions and why. Um, and I think for many people, it was an incredibly frustrating experience. But if we take one step further back, I think what it truly represented was a show of power and a show of force by the retail crowd, right? By the individual people who said, I will stand up against a system that screwed me in 2008 and a system that pretends or believes that they're all powerful. But in this one instance, we put this tiny bit of pressure on this one little stock or this group of stocks AMC, GME, and so on. 
and suddenly the entire market goes bananas. And I think that was ridiculed by a lot of the um, you know larger media outlets. Oh, there's just a bunch of crazy people online. This was the first instance where the system really saw, hey, we can't screw around with those people, right? Like these people will have power, and that power is only going to increase from here on out, right? It's all about literacy. The more that you know about the system, the more that you know how to interact with the system, the more you can hold it accountable. And this, in a really strange way, was a way to hold Wall Street accountable and say, hey, don't screw around with us one more time because we're here and we kind of know how your system works now. Yeah. yeah. Well, there Absolutely. were and there were people on Wall Street who did take losses um, yeah. because of their short position. So it's not like it worked out all rosy for them, but ultimately they were in a position to absorb those losses. Yep. I mean, I think that's ultimately the sort of the, the moral of the story or, or what was revealed is there's all this mythology around like, oh, it's the free market and this, these stock values, oh, they just represent like the intrinsic value of this company. That's all bullshit. You know, I mean, it's it's all fake. It's very much rigged and manipulated. And the mo- but the moment that it was like regular people who tried to get in on the game, well, they had to bring the hammer down and make sure that you can never ever have that happen. Yeah. So ultimately, it was all extraordinarily revealing of how things actually work. Absolutely. Yeah, and it showed, I think, the weaknesses in the system, right? And the the biggest loopholes. And I think that's all what this is about, right? It's all about loopholes and exploiting loopholes. The short selling mechanism is very easy to abuse by the largest players in the world, right? And I think one of the ironic things is a lot of people got ridiculed for saying, oh, you know, we'll stick it to the hedge funds because of 2008. And then people said, well, it wasn't the hedge funds in 2008. It was all the large investment banks. But the real joke of the story is that this um, practice of naked short selling and many of the other ways of abusing the short selling mechanism actually doesn't happen at the short seller or the hedge fund. It happens earlier at the prime broker, which just happens to be all the largest investment banks in the world, right? And so this basket of six companies that basically runs the U.S. financial markets, they are yet again, um, in a way, indirectly at fault for some of these things that happened and have not been held accountable properly, right? They have not been held accountable in 2008 properly. They still have not been held accountable now. And One of the things that I think is really important from a sort of national security level is that a market needs to be trustworthy, right? And so if the main reputation of the U.S. stock market is that it's a rigged system, a lot of regulators should scratch their head and be like, hey, we really got to do something and we're going to show some signal to the greater public, hey, we will actually go after those people, right? And sometimes it's not the SEC, sometimes it's the DOJ, but it's important that there needs to be a new system of uh, checks and balances on Wall Street that is currently not really there, which is namely jail time for individual people, right? If you betray the system, if you make a short sell, if you use the mechanisms in a way that is not intended and that is illicitly extracting profits from the system, you should face at least the consequences to your own personal liberty. Yeah, yeah, I think that's really well Indeed. said. Really well, enjoyed the the film. I encourage everybody to go and uh, watch it. We really appreciate you joining us, man. Yeah, Thank great you. to have you, Tobias. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for watching. We really appreciate it. Uh, it was cool to be featured in that. I was telling him yeah, before, we got a text message like months ago. I mean, like, hey, did you guys know you were in this movie? I was like, what are you talking about? So yeah. that was kind of cool uh, in order to have that exposure. Thank you all, though, to those of you who support the show. You know, uh, in terms of... The, our coverage and why we need you, that Trump block is a perfect example. We are not able to cover the news in the way that it properly should be covered. We should have been able to play a clip for everyone of Trump from the rally in order to give people a real feel of it. But because we have seen now multiple YouTube channels get taken down for accurately reporting the news, playing a clip, and then describing those comments in context, you have no idea when these content policies are going to come for you. And in the event that they do, we rely on you 100%. It's a perilous time, you know, as we've said previously, in order to cover the news properly especially this Russia hysteria. So thank you all so much. You just give us that peace of mind. It really just means a lot. It yeah. means the world. Absolutely. We love you guys, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. See you tomorrow.
Hey guys, we're gonna be totally upfront with you. This is the most perilous time that we have ever operated in. It is so difficult just to try to sort through the news, but even more importantly, to bring you accurate information as this wave of lockdown and censorship spreads across the nation. Yeah, look, if you can become a premium subscriber today at breakingpoints.com, you're gonna help us build out a vibrant, independent media ecosystem, which is free of mainstream pressure. We can't tell you how important that is at a time like this. Yep, that's right. Go to breakingpoints.com to subscribe. We love you guys and we appreciate you so much.